To the Point with Congressman Bill Pascrell. Hello, I'm Congressman Bill Pascrell. I'd like to welcome you to this latest edition of To the Point. In his distinguished public service career, Leon Panetta has been a first lieutenant in the United States Army, a standard bearer for civil rights, a high-ranking member of the United States Congress, chief of staff to a president. But in February, he took the helm of one of the most essential parts of the federal government, the Central Intelligence Agency, CIA. The president decided that Leon Panetta was the right person for the job. The choice surprised some people, but the Washington Post got it right when it wrote, Panetta was one of the few people who could discipline the omnivorous President Bill Clinton. He sat in on the daily intelligence briefings as a chief of staff. He reviewed the nation's most secret intelligence collection and covert action programs in his previous post as director of the Office of Management and Budget. You didn't forget that, did you? <laughs> and uh, the president really made a surprising decision in picking Panetta, but a good one. Nearly a year later, I couldn't agree more. Leon Panetta, I want to welcome you to the point, and we are so honored to have you Bill, here. Bill, it's nice to be here. Of Appreciate all the experiences that you had before becoming the director in February and being named by the president, what is the most important job relevant to what you're doing right now? Well, I don't think there's any question, but uh, being chief of staff to the president uh, was very relevant because, you know, you're dealing with all of the foreign policy issues, number one, number two, Every morning you're getting the intelligence briefing with the president. You basically walk in, go through those intelligence briefings, ask questions, follow up on it, so that you really see the integration of intelligence and how it affects policymakers. So no question, that, that was a job that really opened my eyes. So to you were right there. Story. Exactly. And uh, President Obama selected you from a lot of folks I'm sure he, that he was going to take a look at or did take a look at. And because of your integrity, you know, you are respected by both sides of the aisle. I, I heralded, heralded this uh, appointment, not all the president's appointments, but particularly this appointment, because I thought it was one, and I'm not blowing smoke, I thought it was one that was well thought out, in that you would bring back the integrity of the department. The, you know, the CIA went through some tough times yes, over the last 10 years. Some uh, self-imposed, some they were not responsible for at all, and so maybe they were responsible for, I don't know. Uh, and, and the position and the mission of the CIA, the Central Intelligence Agency, which is, in short term, the uh, intelligence gathering part of the federal government, basically looking overseas at different countries to bring back intelligence here so we can analyze it and go through it. Did I give you a good definition? That's, uh, that's pretty good. Okay. Uh, it's, uh, you know, in order to protect national security, the president has to know what's going on in the world. He has to understand what's going on. He's got to know the issues. He's got to know the players. He's got to know his enemies. He's got to know what they're up to. Uh, and in order for him to make the decisions he's got to make, he's got to have the very best intelligence available. When he asked me to do this job, he basically said, Leon, he says, I just, I need somebody who can bring integrity to this job and who'll tell me intelligence the way it is. And I said, well, I said, throughout my career, I've been straight with people and I will be honest with you. I think the most important job we have is to tell the president the truth, whether he likes to hear it or not. And there are a lot of presidents don't never, <laughs> don't necessarily like to hear the truth about what's going on because it may affect their decisions. But that's what we're about. We're there to tell the truth as best as we can determine it. I want to talk about the situation now, but I want to go back on something you just talked about. I think it's important that we clear this up. And that is uh, one of the maj major problems, uh, obviously, in any organization or, or amongst organizations is communication. And yet we know uh, that uh, early in the Bush administration, it would seem that when we examine the facts, and this is not to point fingers, but I'm, I'm really analyzing this thing, of protecting Americans, of protecting us in our neighborhoods. Uh, so we're not talking about the second fiddle here, we're talking about the big leagues. It would seem that we don't want policy to shape intelligence. We want intelligence to it. shape policy. Exactly. Now, what do you think I mean by that? What do you mean by that, if you agree with me? Well, you know, look, there's no question. You, I mean, 
if you have made a decision what you want to do, and it may be counter to what the intelligence is about. I mean, look, the weapons of mass destruction in Iraq is the best example of that. Right. If the decision is we're going to go to war in Iraq, right. uh, and we're going to go after uh, what we think are weapons of mass destruction, and you know there may be let's assume there may be intelligence questions about well wait a minute you know we're not sure there are weapons of mass destruction there but a policymaker says well wait a minute this is what we want to do right then what happens is it commits this country to a certain policy direction that is not necessarily in line with the truth of the situation right. and every time that happens happened in vietnam when johnson started That's the right. war in vietnam happened in iraq we get into serious trouble. So if we don't listen to those folks in the field, we're not talking about sitting with a pencil or a pen at a desk in Washington. We're talking about the folks we have in the field, yeah. regardless of what country it is, bringing back firsthand information. Because the job is critical. Now, how many agencies are gathering that information and which are we going to listen to that best match the policies that I want then we get into trouble. Is this, exactly. Am I correctly stating the exactly. fact? Exactly. Now, in the Iraqi situation, we listen to Army intelligence. And I'm an Army guy, but we listen to Army intelligence, not only on weapons of mass destruction, but on curveball. He became the source of a lot of information that we later found out was baloney. <laughs> and yet, we matched this intelligence to the policies to move forward and send troops into Iraq. Bill, let me, let me tell you the, uh, the toughest thing to do, uh, and, and as a former chief of staff, having dealt with the President of the United States and now as director of the CIA, uh, the toughest thing sometimes is to walk into the Oval Office. You're in the Oval Office, the President of the United States, and you've got to look him in the eye and basically tell him what he doesn't want to hear. Mm. Most people walk into that office and they want to tell the President what he likes to hear. And there are presidents Go who along to get along. And there are presidents that basically don't want people to tell him yeah. what he doesn't want to hear. And this president, by the way, just on that one point, don't forget your yeah. your, your thought. But just on this one point, uh, Obama, the pres President Obama's deliberations on the Afghanistan situation uh, is something to be respected, rather than saying he was dilly dallying making the decision. Of course, there's a lot of factors that have to be taken into consideration. No, there's no question. I, I mean, I, I want a president of the United States who is going to go through a thoughtful process of analyzing the facts, the intelligence, what are the implications, what are the consequences of taking a very important step of committing 30,000 of our men and women to battle. I mean, I, that's, the, you know, the, the toughest decision a president has to make right. is to put our kids in harm's way. And the toughest decision we have to make as a, exactly. in the Congress of the United States. Exactly. I mean, we're sending, you know, part of, uh, and, and this is what I didn't like about the president's speech, it was, almost, it was almost like Bush light in that they really didn't explain the sacrifice of the American people. I don't want to get into this, but... You know, American people, we can't just be sending our sons and daughters and our fathers and uncles and, and aunts over to fight in harm's way, put in, put in harm's way. And we sit back here as if nothing happened. Nothing's going on out there. That's a good th definition of reality TV. And we <laughs> got to get beyond that to the real reality about what's really happening and what's the place of the American citizenry in this whole situation. Would you agree with that? No, I think... Uh you know, I I in order for these kinds of decisions to be supported by the American people, they have to understand that uh, all of us uh, really have to make a sacrifice. Uh, that, you know, war is not something to be taken lightly. War, you know, the, this attitude, you can go to war and still go shopping and have a good time. I mean, you know, it, frankly, when we're at war and we face the kind of challenges that we face, I think every American has to be willing to come together and say, We've all got to hold hands in what is the toughest challenge facing this country, which is combat and war.